open that up, that'd be great. It's all right if you don't have it, just nudge a person and you can follow along as well. As I've been notified, we don't have that much time, so we'll jump straight into it. Uh, but before we do, I just want to say a big thank you to Candice uh, for sharing so vulnerably to us what the class means to you. And also appreciate James for sharing a powerful contribution with us, amen. Uh, but I love that both of their short talks kind of lead into what we're going to talk about today. Both of them, to some extent, mention we don't deserve this. Yeah. We don't deserve that. And my title today for you is, You Don't Deserve Grace. You don't deserve grace. What's the definition of grace? Free and unmerited favor. So by definition, grace cannot be deserved. Because grace itself is defined as something that you're not worthy of. No one is entitled to receiving grace. And if there was somebody, that would be Jesus Christ, who did not receive any grace. I want to ask you today, do you take grace in your life for granted? It's easy to take grace for granted, isn't it? People treat you well all the time, yeah. and you notice it only when they stop doing that. So before we jump into the lesson, I want to say thank you to my beautiful wife. Oh. You know, Evelyn, you are so patient. Yeah. You are so forgiving, yeah. and I'm so lucky to call you my wife. Oh. I appreciate your grace so much. Oh. Love you, honey. Oh. But I want to ask you today, do you take grace for granted? Why? Today we're going to look at a parable. The parable is called Workers in the Vineyard. You may notice if you've been to Sunday school. And we can find this in Matthew chapter 20, verse 1. Let's jump straight into it. Here the Bible says, For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard. He agreed to pay them a denarius for the day and send them into his vineyard. Right. About nine in the morning, he went out and saw others standing in the marketplace doing nothing. Right. He told them, you also go work in my vineyard and I will pay you whatever is right. Yeah. So they also went. He went out again about noon and about three in the afternoon and did the same thing. About five in the afternoon, he went out and found still others standing around. Right. He asked them, why have you been standing here all day long doing nothing? Yeah. Because no one has hired us, they answered. He said to them, you also go and work in my vineyard. Yeah. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, call the workers and pay them their wages. Right. Beginning with the last ones hired and going on to the first. The workers who were hired about five in the afternoon came and each received a denarius. Right. So when those who came, uh, those came who were hired first, they expected to receive more. Mm. But each of them also received a denarius. Right. When they received it, they began to grumble against the landowner. Mm. These who were hired last worked only one hour, they said. And you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the work and the heat of the day. Mm -hmm. But he answered one of them, I am not being unfair to you, friend. Didn't you agree to work for a denarius? Take your pay and go. I want to give the one who was hired last the same as I gave you. Don't I have the right to do what I want with my money? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. Point number one, it is fair for God to do whatever he pleases. It is fair for God to do whatever he pleases, amen? Everyone was paid what was agreed upon between them and the landowner. Let's read verse 9 to 12 again. Here it says, the workers who were hired about five in the afternoon came and each received a denarius. If you look at verse 2, it says he agreed to pay them a denarius for the day and send them into this vineyard, right? Mm -hmm. So actually, technically, no one was 
underpaid. Right. Mm -hmm. So when those who came were hired first, they expected to receive more. Yeah. What they didn't understand was that, hey, why are these people who were hired later pay the same amount as us who were hired first? Right. But before we look into that, we need to understand that no one was underpaid or cheated. Right. If they signed a contract, they were simply paid the amounts yeah. that they initially agreed to. The workers hired earlier complained because they felt like those hired later did not deserve to be paid the same amount as them. Wow. They're like, we put in more work, how come they get to work less and get paid the same amount? Yeah. But here you see that the argument is an emotional one. Right. They offer no evidence of any wrongdoing from the landowner. Yeah. They didn't say, you, did, you had this malpractice, you gave us less money, no. They just complained out of their hearts that were full of envy and jealousy. Right. Come on, yeah. It was not out of objective reality. Yeah. They felt like by comparison they were entitled to more right. because they had worked longer. Mm -hmm. That's like Christians feeling like they've been in the kingdom of God for longer and therefore they, be, they should be recognized for what they have done for God. Oh. The landowner had the authority to pay whatever he felt was right to the late workers because he said, I will pay you whatever is right. right. So he had the authority. He had the right to overpay them. Yeah. They, they could have gone like, Master, that's not very smart because you are totally economically making no sense here. They could have made that argument, but they could not have said, that's, you have no right of doing that. Right. Matthew chapter 20, verse 13, it says, but he answered one of them, I am not being unfair to you, friend. Didn't you agree to work for a denarius? Take your pay and go. Right. I want to give the one who was hired the last the same as I gave you. Don't I have the right to do what I want with my money? Or are you envious because I am generous? Right. He paid them not based on human knowledge, logic. That's why they didn't understand what he was doing. Right. He paid them based on grace. Yeah. Nobody could argue with the master what he wanted to do with his money. Right. Right. It's like today if you decide, I want to treat you food, you can't argue with me. Why are you treating me food, right? Yeah. It's like I get to do whatever I want with my money. Yeah. God is the landowner. Right. He has the right to determine what people get, what you get, right. not you. Yeah. We are only the workers in this vineyard. Right. Come on. Come on. Here I want to share with you the story of Edna. Edna is one of our dear brother's mother. Right. Wow. Okay? And for many, many years, this brother kept going to Edna and kept trying to persuade her, please study the Bible. Right. Please come to church. Please come and at least hear what Jesus is all about. Right. And every time she said, no. Mm -hmm. I appreciate what Ken is sharing. Mm -hmm. Many of us, when we talk to people who keep refusing us, I don't know if you guys have ever experienced that, but if you're on campus sharing your faith, you bump into the same people. Yeah. Yeah. And eventually you're like, I don't want to invite them anymore because I know they're going to say no. Yeah. And you eventually fall into the logic of like, well, if they already said no, they have no right to demand me to ask them again. Because right. they don't deserve the opportunity. Well, what if that person was you? Right. Oh. Well, this was Anna. Oh, wow. okay. She has said no many, many times. Yeah. And maybe some of us who are more religious and legalistic would have gone, ah, she had her chance. Mm -hmm. But last Friday, she asked his son, her son, can I be baptized tonight? Whoa. I don't want to wait. Right. Oh, wow. Wow. But that took... Her son understanding that no one deserves grace. Right. Therefore, we freely give grace. Yeah. Come on. And that's what God does. It is fair for God to do whatever he pleases. Right. If you want to give this lost person a billion chances just for them to be saved, isn't that a good thing? Yeah. Yeah. We should be rejoicing for that. Right. Come on. Point number one, it is fair for God to do whatever he wants. Right. Point number two, you're not as great as you think. 
ever thought about that? You're not as great as you think. I mean, XX, the great. Why the great does not exist in God's kingdom, amen? And many of us identify with the workers who put in a day as a work. Maybe that's what you're thinking right now. Oh, those people work longer. That's me, Leo. That, that's me. I was hired earlier than those people. We identify with the workers that were hired earlier rather than the add-ons at the end of the day. Many people think that they have been diligent servants in the kingdom of God. Many people think that they're spiritually strong. Many think that they have been pretty good people. Is that you today? Maybe you're like, ah. I think I'm pretty strong, spiritual, pretty solid, you know? Like whenever people talk about people struggling and having this sin and that's it, that's not me. You know, as Leo is preaching right now, he's talking about my brother or my sister, not me. I'm, I'm good, bro. The workers forgot that it was a landowner that gave them a chance. When you think about it, it's kind of funny, isn't it? They come to the landowner to complain about the pay even though without the landowner hiring them, they would not even have a denarius to live on. So if the landowner didn't hire them, they would have nothing to complain about. They would be sitting around sucking on their thumbs. And yet they were complaining. Matthew chapter 20, verse 6, it says, About five in the afternoon, he went out and found still others standing all around. He asked them, Why have you been standing here all day long doing nothing? Because no one has hired us, they, asked. they answered. He said to them, you also go and work in my vineyard. Yeah. There's actually, in fact, absolutely nothing that separates those who were hired earlier to those who were hired later. Yeah, right. yeah. If those who were hired earlier were not hired, they would have been in the same situation as those who were hired later. Yeah. And so they were all without a job. Isn't it hilarious that they are the ones being ungrateful and complaining to the landowner? Right. Without the landowner hiring them, they would have still been outside in the marketplace doing nothing. Right. In the same way, without God, you would still be lost yeah. right. in darkness and having no purpose in your life. Right. And I love the hypocrisy that some of us show. If the roles were ex- reversed here, right? Let's say those who were hired earlier were in fact the ones who were hired later. Right. I'm sure they would not have any complaints about the situation. Right. Come on. right? I get to work less and I get to pay the same amount. I'm happy. Right. But because they work more and they compare and they feel like we are entitled to being paid more, that's why they complain. Right. Yeah. That is hypocrisy. Yeah. Yeah. I bet when they were complaining to the landowner, they didn't even think about those who were hired later as real human beings. As human beings who had families to feed. As human beings who needed that money to survive. My friends, we all need a bit of compassion and grace in our lives. Disciples today, have we lost touch? Of that. Yeah. Have, we, have we lost touch of how people out there and people around us need compassion and grace? Right. Come on. I want to share with you a story of Sunil. Come on. Come on. Sunil, he was so depressed to the point where he attempted to commit suicide multiple times. Right. Every day he lived without hope mm-hmm. and he waited for his life to end. But praise God, as his lowest point, he met disciples, and he found hope in Jesus. And last week, he was baptized into the kingdom of God. But Sunil is not a one-off case. In fact, some of you came from that background. Some of you came from a background of depression. Some of you came from a background of suicidal attempts. Have you been so quick to forget that? Have you been so so quick to forget that there are people out there that struggle with the same thing? 
Or are you just happy that your problem is fixed so you don't worry about it no more? We must learn to be happy for other people. I want to ask you today, do you really have compassion for those you see as lesser in your life? For those you see as the lost, as those you see as the less talented, as those you see as the less promising people, if they become Christians, the less promising people, as those you see you need more effort in being patient with, do you have compassion for those people? Or would you not even blink an eye? Point number two, you're not as great as you think because there's absolutely nothing that makes you different from any one of those people. Point number three, do you really want what you deserve? Romans chapter 6 verse 25, the Bible says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. If God gave each of us what we deserved, we would all be going to hell. Yeah. That's, true. That's what we deserve. Yeah. The Bible literally says, the funny thing is the Bible uses the word wage here. Yeah. Mm. Which is exactly what these workers were demanding, weren't they? Right. They're going, I put in this work and I deserve to get paid this amount. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, the Bible is saying you work so hard to sin and what you deserve is death. And yet in God's grace, he has given us in heaven a gift. He has given us salvation, forgiveness, forbearance as a gift. I want to ask the Christians, is that enough for you? Mm. Or are you still complaining? Are you still complaining about, it's so hard to wake up and have my quiet times. It's so hard to go out there and evangelize the people keep rejecting me, bro. It's so hard to give my heart in relationships because they hurt me. Is Jesus dying on the cross not enough for you? Non-disciples, I want to ask you. Is God's grace alone not enough for you to give up everything and become a Christian? Have you ever made a mistake before? I bet all of us have. Then you need God's grace. I know some of us have been around and we've been studying the Bible for a while. Is God's grace not enough of a motivation for you to give up everything and get baptized? Tell me, what, what in the world is worth it for you to forfeit your salvation? Yeah. I want to share with you a story. A story of April. Which I think should fill us with a bit of awe in God, but also a bit of healthy fear in God. You know, April, he was kind of like, you know, one of our friends that we knew. He went out there and... Um, all the time, he just went drinking and partying and dancing, and that was what his all life was all about, you know? Some of us, we know that, those kinds of friends, amen? Yeah, man. Come on. Come on. Yeah. He, he, he just lived a life that was just like, yeah, let's go all out and just seek pleasure. Yeah. Right. Come on. And he made a mistake. In a good mistake, in a, in a way that it's a good mistake, but it's a mistake if you, if you want your life to go well, don't pray this prayer. Right. He was like, God, please humble me and help me to see I am in sin and my need for you. Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. Well, if you pray a prayer, you can be sure that God's going to answer it. <laughs> and so he got into an accident. He broke a bone in his leg. And then the doctors found out that all around his leg were cancer cells. And his leg needed to be fully amputated. But you know what? It was that experience that made him see, wow, I really need God. He prayed to be woken up from his sin and see his need for God. 
And amen, he did. He was woken up from his sin, and he saw, I need to be baptized. I need to become a Christian. I want to ask you today, if you're already studying the Bible, is it going to take your lead breaking and you having cancer for you to get baptized? If not, what are you waiting for? Hurry up and become a Christian. You've got to be grateful for God's grace and take a hold of this incredible gift. Because none of us deserve it. In conclusion, my title today is, You Don't Deserve Grace. I don't deserve grace. Point number one, it is fair for God to do whatever he pleases. Point number two, you're not as great as you think. And point number three, do you really want what you deserve? My prayer is today's lesson is short but sweet. And I pray that it motivates you to really get to know this grace. And, you know, we, we all know those people who know grace and yet take advantage of it. Let me tell you something. Knowing grace and not responding to it is worse than not knowing it in the first place. So if you're already studying the Bible, the onus is on you to hurry up and respond to God's grace. And if you're hearing this message and you're like, wow, I really want to know what God's grace is like, I want to encourage you, after this service, find a Christian that invited you and study the Bible. Study the Bible, get to know God's grace, and become a Christian so you'll be saved. And finally, to my lovely fellow brothers and sisters, let's we all be grateful for God's grace. Amen. If you're a Christian, then I don't want to hear you complaining all the days of your life, okay? You wake up, you read your Bible, you pray, and you'll be, you be fired up, okay? All right, so that's it for today's lesson. Um, we're going to finish with one last song, and to God be all the glory. Amen. Amen.